The big uh, discussion on live sheep exports. Uh, you were just in WA and you've encouraged Premier Mark McGowan to uh, educate people on the importance of live sheep exports. What was his response? Well, unfortunately, he wouldn't meet with me, but um, I've got to say I'm not going to tear Mark McGowan down because he's the only Labor politician showing uh, common sense. He understands the importance of this industry to Western Australia, but the role that we play globally in making sure that animal welfare standards are maintained. What the Labor government has shown, and, and Murray Watt said immediately, was that he wants to shut this down uh, on science. And he also admitted that they hadn't even done any modelling on what the financial impact might be, which means you might have to compensate Western Australian farmers for that. And just to remind the Australian taxpayer out there, they're paying nearly $2 billion in compensation for the last time the Labor Party had control of live animal exports with, with Indonesia and cattle, and, and they lost a court case on that. But there is no science. If you get back to the, the first principle of this as to why they're actually shutting this industry down, is they're saying that the science um, doesn't stack up. Well, the science does stack up because what we put in place, reforms in 2018 when I was minister after the Awasi hit, was we move from a mortality methodology in terms of making sure that the standards on those boats were exemplary to an animal welfare one. So much so that we have independent observers on those boats that count the pants per minute of sheep in those pens to make sure that they aren't in any distress. Uh, that is the standard that is world leading that no other country in the world actually has, has adopted. And so if we actually phase this out and we shut it down, then all we're doing is exporting the animal welfare standards of Australia to another country such as Ethiopia or Sudan. And I don't think that they're going to have the same regulatory framework that we have. This industry is sticking around and it's not just for cultural reasons, it's also for food security reasons. Uh, many of these countries don't have the, the cold storage supply chain uh, capacity that we do, and so they have to process these animals in country. And we've got very strict record, uh, records about how we look after them when they're in country as well in terms of the processing. So we have a, a complete supply chain management system that supports the animal welfare standards that Australians would expect. But what Labor's saying is, let's just cut and run. And let's just pay farmers in Western Australia some more compensation. That's not the Australian way. The Australian way is to stay, to do the job right and to lead the world. And that's what exactly we're doing right now. And I think Mark McGowan, as I said to him uh, publicly, is I'll take your hand, let's walk into Canberra and let's educate these Eastern politicians about exactly how you do it and the importance not only to Western Australia but to Australia and to animal welfare standards globally. And correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of people don't like the whole live sheep uh, exports. Why is Labor not extending this ban to live cattle exports? Well, they're not at the moment. They've already banned it once before in 2011, which is costing you, the Australian taxpayer, uh, close to $2 billion in compensation. Uh, but what they've shown is that they are prepared to be spooked easily. And, and not, I wouldn't say that everybody doesn't like um, live uh, exports. Can I say particularly, research that I've seen shows that less than a third of the Australian population don't like it. A third understand it and another third don't understand it, but are agnostic to it. So it's important that as governments, we put the framework, the regulatory framework around the industry to give uh, the community confidence that we're doing this safely. Uh, and that we're doing it the best in the world. And that's what we've done. And what worries us and what worries particularly the cattle industry is that once Labor folds on live sheep, they'll fold again on cattle like they did in 2011. Uh, and that's, that's actually going to destroy Northern Australia's production systems. They don't have the capacity to have feedlots up there of any major scale because they grow pasture that's actually not to the scale that we can and they don't, are unable to produce the large volumes of grain. So this is a challenge that you would take away the pastoral uh, industry, particularly in Northern Australia, Northern Territory and, and in Northern Queensland, that would just uh, take, take many livelihoods away. And as we've seen, it, it costs over $2 billion to compensate those families, those, those small businesses out there that have been impacted uh, by Labor's decision. So you shut one part down, they're coming to a state and industry near you, and that's what the cattle industry, particularly in Queensland and Northern Territory, are really worried about.